What is going on everyone? My name is Talmadge and welcome back to Big Bro Security. This is episode two in my so far three part arch series where two of the parts are actually part 1A and B. And those are how to install the base arch system manually and then how to do it automated via arch install. In this video, I'm going to be telling you exactly how to configure arch Linux to one, run a desktop so that it's usable instead of just the base command line that you have right now. Two, how to set it up for SSH remote access so that you can access it as a server over the command line from another computer if you need to. And three, how to turn it into the ultimate hacking operating system full of hacking tools for anything and every use case that you might possibly need. And fourthly, I'll be showing you how to install a great simple hypervisor so that you can run VMs on top of Arch Linux. I'm currently running Windows right now. As you can see, this is just because I don't have a capture card. So I'm having to use Windows and a VM to be able to show you this process. However, once I'm done with these set of videos, then I'll be able to fully move over to Linux and leave Windows behind for reasons that I'll probably cover in a future video. So first, go ahead and boot up your Arch Linux system. And as you can see, we have a encryption password. I highly recommend encrypting your Arch installs just because it is more secure. And if someone ever got access to your system, if they get physical access, they at least cannot access your data through your drive if they try to steal it. So especially if you have a laptop and you're more mobile, I would highly recommend encrypting your drives. It doesn't really take that big of a performance hit. It just decreases your boot up time. But nonetheless, that's what I recommend. And so that's what I've done in this VM, even though it's just a virtual machine. I want to maintain good security practice. And as a cybersecurity professional on a cybersecurity channel, my recommendation is encrypt everything if at all possible. So we'll go ahead and log in. Okay, and now everything seems to be up and running on our basic command line. We'll go ahead and run sudo pacman dash s y y u. This gets the list of all the repositories and make sure that everything is up to date. And it looks like it is except for a fake root package. There could be a lot of updates or no updates, depending on how quickly back to back you're running the system. Arch Linux is a rolling release distribution, which means that you will be getting updates from pretty much any point in the day because it's just constantly and constantly and constantly updated with small micro changes rather than doing like Ubuntu or especially Windows or Mac OS where they only roll out updates every couple of weeks and usually every year they'll run a giant feature update and then in between just little little smaller updates. Arch Linux just constantly is having small little tweaks updating over time. And so that's why it's important to update your system really often. However, make sure you have backups just in case those rolling updates give you an error that nobody else on the internet has and it crashes your system and forces you to reinstall. You don't need to lose precious data, so at least keep it on a separate drive. If not, back up your system every single day. All right, so here we are in the basic terminal and we'll go ahead and install a few needed packages. So we'd run sudo pacman s and we'll install gnome. This is a group of packages that lets you run the gnome desktop. We'll go ahead and install gnome tweaks that just give you a little bit more of the settings. Then we'll install Neovim if you haven't already and VIFM, which is a Vim file manager. So we'll go ahead and let these things install. And then once our install is done, I'll show you what to do to get this desktop up and running so that we can install all the rest of the packages that we need. Okay, and now our install is done. So to get this desktop to actually work, we wanna run sudo system ctl enable gdm gdm is stands for gnome display manager in linux you need some sort of display manager to actually enable anything to be displayed it also is basically the login screen as well so it lets you graphically log in and then handles starting gnome desktop and all the other packages associated with that so now we can run sudo system ctl start gdm. Enabling the service in system ctl enables it to start on startup, whereas starting it starts it right now. And we have this nice little thing. It says Arch Linux down here. It looks pretty cool. Enter in our password again, and it looks like it's loading. And we'll go ahead and skip the tour so that we can get right to it. As you can see, we have a few apps on here. I'm just going to go ahead and search console 
and it looks like the console or the GNOME terminal package was installed. Let's go ahead really quickly into settings for this VM. And you can do this even if you're on bare metal just to make sure everything's running properly and make sure that you have the right resolution chosen for your display. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and open up the web browser on here and we can go to black arch so now to install the repository of hacking tools which is called black arch we're going to run curl dash o https colon slash slash black arch dot org slash strap dot sh and now we'll run sudo ch mod which changes the permissions plus x adds the executable permission to this file strap.sh now let's go ahead and run sudo dot slash strap dot sh and it will install the black arch key ring and therefore the repository as you can see now when it runs syyu you have black arch installed here so we'll run sudo pacman dash s while you just to make sure that all of the things are updated and you can see the black arch key ring needs to be updated from the install that was ran on the strap.sh file now if you really wanted to go all out you could run sudo pacman dash s black arch that would install all 2897 packages which is insane and i do not recommend it just because how the heck are you even going to know what package you need however now you have access to all of these tools and so if in your studies you come across specific things like oh maybe i need to install metasploit you go to pacman dash dash s metasploit and you could very easily install it now you don't have to worry about all these other things and things that might not work it's just sudo pacman s metasploit and it works which is great now the next thing we're going to do to is open this up to ssh remote access and to do that we'll go sudo pacman dash dash s open ssh and as you can see it was already installed but now it is installed again so sudo system ctl enable sshd and sudo system ctl start sshd this now allows our user talkelly3 to ssh into this box using the IP address of the box and it'll allow us to have remote access to all these hacking tools via this box which is super duper nice. The next thing I'll show you is how to install the Arch Linux AUR which is their Arch user repository. It contains tons of other packages the Arch Linux distribution repositories itself do not already contain. So it can contain different versions and also can just be really great for downloading those tools that aren't as popular or popular enough to end up in the repositories themselves. So we'll run sudo pacman dash sy dash dash needed git and base dash devel, which is the development packages. So it looks like all these were already installed, but we'll just go ahead and reinstall them really quick. And everything looks good. We'll run git clone https colon slash hash aur dot arch linux dot org slash yay dot git. Now we'll clone into git yay and download it and then cd into yay. Now we'll do make pkg, so make package dash si, which tells Arch Linux to build this executable package and then install it. As you can see, it's installing Go because Yay is built on Go. Some people don't like it for this reason, but personally, I don't really find an issue with it and Yay seems to work really great for me. So that's what I've been using for my AUR manager for a long time. For a while, I did use Trizen, but then I switched to Yay just because it's easier to type and it works really good. While Yay is installing, the easy way to change your desktop wallpaper can be just to go into settings, go into appearance, change things to dark mode. And as you can see, there are a lot of different pictures to choose from here. So we'll just go ahead and click this wallpaper just because I personally think it looks really dope. Go ahead and X that out. And now everything looks way better. So if you're wondering how to change that in GNOME, that is the way. Now, 
Yay is ready to be installed. We'll go ahead and press Y to confirm and Yay is now installed. Okay, so the last thing that I'm going to show you how to do is to install GNOME boxes, which is a really easy hypervisor to use in Linux. And honestly, I found it performs even better than VirtualBox or Hyper-V on Windows. So to do that, we'll run sudo pacman s gnome boxes. It has a ton of dependencies. And as you can see, it's based off QEMU and KVM pretty much. Although the main things honestly that I see in here are QEMU. And that is what Linux typically runs a lot of their virtual machines based off of, unless you're using something like VirtualBox or VMware on Linux. As you can see, it looks like it's done and we can open boxes. And yes, it makes it super duper easy. So we can click through this. You could click add over here. You could even do download from OS and it gives you a ton of different options really right here. You can even install Nix OS if you wanted to. Also could install PureOS, another instance of Arch Linux, Manjaro, OpenSUSE, all these different things you can install. And it's pretty cool. You could do that. And then it basically is just going to automatically download the ISO for you and let you install. If not, you could click install from file. You could choose a file and go through the bit of customization that you would need, but it makes virtualization on Linux really easy, which is nice because even if you have all the tools for penetration testing on your base system, you may want to use a VM. So that way every engagement, especially if you're doing professional engagements, you can spin up a Kali instance, use that and then delete it. So there's no possible evidence of anything bad or anything confidential from the organization that you're running your engagement with left on your VM or hard drive. Anyways, that's all for today, you guys. If you like this video, please feel free to leave a like and comment down below if you have any questions or any ideas or thoughts for future videos that you would like me to make surrounding Linux or anything else in cybersecurity. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and check out my website and newsletter, which will be linked below as well as my creative channel. It's also linked down there. I'm Talmadge from Big Bro Security and I'll see you in the next one.